Hi, uh, welcome to Wine and Watercolors with Wendy. Today we're going to paint this windmill. It is, I'm following a prompt from Doodle Washed for April and today the prompt was windmills. So I sketched this out um, to try to make sure that my windmill things were the same thing. I just basically laid my pencil down, marked it with my thumb and then went around in a circle. Super exciting, but the outline will be available on my Facebook page. Um, today, because we aren't going out, um, we're following the quarantine. Today's wine pairing is once again, 19 Crimes, um, Cabernet Sauvignon. Once again, if you get the app from 19 Crimes, these little guys will talk, it's kind of fun. Okay, so I've readjusted the setup again, so hopefully this works better for everybody involved. Um, I think I'm just going to use my Prisms Pan Paint Terrain uh, pans today. Um, I might throw in some Payne's Gray. I might not. I'm not sure yet. We're just kind of playing around right now. So I'm going to open this up. It just pops open. It has its own palette, but obviously I haven't cleaned it in a while, so I just use a different palette. So you want to get your image transferred onto your paper. Um, light box. I almost always use a light box. But you can use graphite transfer paper. You can use um, a light box. You can put it up to a window. Uh, just when you get this image printed out, um, I use Microsoft Word to print it out so I can resize it to the way that I want to. I've got two brushes. Um, I might grab some more. I have a pile of brushes here. The main thing is, is they're all watercolor brushes and they all have good points. Paper towel. Um, it's not clean water. It's still a uh, pink and orange from the last thing I painted. I'm not neurotic about cleaning out my water. If some of my sails have a little bit of a pinky tone to it, that might be kind of cool. Not sure yet. So we're gonna go ahead and get started um, and kind of see what happens with this windmill. So I'm gonna get the brush wet and get the palette wet. You're not gonna be able to see as much of the palette this time. Um, so I do apologize for that. Actually, I'm gonna use a smaller brush cause I'm gonna do the spines on this windmill first. Yeah. Uh, so that I have an idea of what's going on. Um, I'm gonna leave this scaffolding till later so I can um, get the sails all done and then I'll do the scaffolding. So I think I'm going to use this lighter brown that's in this pan. That's a little orangey for me. It's almost like a yellow ochre. Turn this sideways. Redoing my setup has made it a little difficult for me to <laughs> reach everything. Um, and then there's more of a, a redder. Sorry if I bumped that post. Kind of mix those two together, get a softer brown and maybe some of the purple in there too just there I like that better so this is the far one the purple and um the the orange I will check and get the colors and uh put them on here when I edit this video so I uh, for the beginning I'm just gonna quickly do these spines I always get a little water droplet. So these are the spines that the sails are attached to on this windmill. And feel free to turn your paper. I tend to turn mine a lot. It makes it easier for me to get to where I want to be. And this one's the trickiest because the scaffolding is all right behind it. So it's really hard to tell what is the spine and what isn't. So just trust your instincts and go with that. We'll go back through and 
darken them on one side so they kind of have more of a three-dimensional look to them. They're looking pretty flat right now. Keep turning. I realize I'm right-handed and this is why I always end up sticking my hand in things, but I'm going to do it anyway. I should probably turn the other direction and you can learn from my mistakes and work from left to right so that you don't stick your hand in things. Uh, but I'm going to do this the most difficult way possible. Now my paper uh, that I did the original sketch on was actually smaller than my watercolor paper. So I had to add this top sail on so it's not fully outlined. <clears throat> Try to make sure that we get that fully outlined for you. Okay, so um, that's done. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. I think we're just gonna make the center. The same brown. Okay, I like that. Um, I've decided that I want the sails to be kind of a green. Um, but I'm gonna do these smaller ones a little bit, uh, the ones closer, a little darker and then lighter. Um, I just want this kind of to be bright, kind of spring, almost looks like a big giant pinwheel in the middle of a field sort of situation. So I'm picking, I think this one's called vine leaf. I'm really sorry, I don't have the colors with me. I'm switching to the bigger brush because this is gonna be a pain if I try to do this with a small one. Okay, um, and we'll try to work from left to right this time. So I'm just gonna do these bottom ones. I want it really dark uh, where the lines are for the ruffles. And then I wanna lighten it up and almost put it on in the swooping shape that I want that sail to have. I don't like the way that one's outlined. I'm gonna take that off real quick. There you go. You wanna make sure you erase um, before you put the paint down or you can't erase it back out. So I'm doing it in a swoop and then I'm gonna do this one in a swoop. This one's not gonna be hyper, hyper realistic. It's gonna be more just kind of a fun, loose play. Then down here, the base of the thing, I want it to be pretty dark. I'm gonna rinse. I realize I'm not showing you the paints very well, so I'm gonna try to move those over here so you can see. Okay, so then that's all on. I'm gonna go ahead and just redo those lines again while it's kind of wet and it'll just bleed a little. And that might give me that fun little um, effect that I'm going for. We'll come back and check on it when it's dry and see what we think. So once again, you're just putting the, the green down on the line and then blending it out. It's kind of a steampunk feel, so we want it to just almost just be um, 
and just everything's going to be fine. There we go. And I'm going to just blend this over. And again, I'm doing the brush in the arc shape of how I want those to be shaped. I'm going to go back in and redo my lines while this is nice and wet so it'll bleed out. Don't be afraid of blooms. Um, if you didn't want blooms, don't paint with watercolor. Uh, <clears throat> or do a different kind of watercolor where you build everything up in layers. I don't really have the patience for that most of the time, so I don't do it that way. Okay, so that needs to be darker. the spine. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself because the pan paints do dry faster and you might not be able to blend it. Especially if you're taking straight pigment and sticking it on from the palette. Mm. And since you're blending, you're going to lose some of the pigmentation. It's no big deal. Um, that's why we come back in. I know a lot of people are stuck at home right now. So um, if you don't have the exact same supplies that I'm using, don't worry about it. I maybe... I'll just darker it on here, I think. Um, try like a kid's Crayola watercolor or try your acrylics and just paint it your way. It would be totally fine. And we're just going to keep going around in a circle. Um, I don't know if I can speed it up when I post this or not. So right now you just get to bear with me as I paint really slowly. See how that's pulling? That's like really, really pretty, how it's giving us all this variation of color. I know this is a pretty muted one compared to some of the other ones I've done in the past. It's okay. Sometimes we have to soften our palettes a little. Two more. <laughs> Just be patient. And this could be a super fun painting if you did it in like rainbows. Um, every uh, sail has a different color. That would be kind of fun. Um, you could do it uh, in like school colors, uh, like our school here. Their colors are blue and white. So I could do this bottom part blue and then with a lighter blue, make the other part look like it's almost white. White's a hard one. We all know that, but it's okay. Um, yeah, you could play with like your favorite sports teams and everything else. I mean, I could do it brown and orange for the Cleveland Browns. Oh, I don't know how pretty that would be. They really do have some of the ugliest colors in team sports. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergies. really good. Because you're doing each one individually, they may all look different. That's kind of fun. 
that's pretty cool. We want them to look a little different so that we can, I, it gives your painting some interest, I think. I think it's fun. And don't forget your paper towel. It's probably one of your most important painting tools. So it helps you regulate how much paint or water or anything that's on the brush. And then when you're still learning, it, it'll be a while before you can eyeball it. I still don't. Sometimes I have to keep doing it again and again until I get it exactly how I want it. And then I change my mind because I do that too. So that one I didn't go back over. So I'm going to do that real quick. This one. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it right side up and get a good look at it and see what I think. Um, what I think we're going to need to do is we're going to need to darken around these poles and we're going to need to finish the rest of the sails. Um, we're going to see how the color works and what we think. So I'm going to switch to the lighter brush and I'm going to take, it's purple smoke. I know this one because I use it a lot take the purple smoke and I'm just going to take it on the edge of my spine and then I'm going to get it wet and I'm going to blend that up. Make sure this area is dry before you start doing this or you'll probably just end up with mud. But what we want to do is keep the purple on one side so that you it looks like a, almost like a dowel rod. It looks rounded. It'll just give it a little bit more of a 3D look. And the scaffolding uh, will give us a 3D look as well, but I wanna get these uh, sails done first because I feel like they're the star of the show and the scaffolding is just there to hold it up. It's kind of like a bra. The bra is there to just hold it up. <laughs> Boobs are the star of the show. I really need to get out of the house. <laughs> I'm just babbling. <laughs> and I kind of think I should probably make it darker towards the base and let it lighten as it gets whiter at the top. So. I'm going to readjust how we're doing this just a little bit. Now, if you guys have never done Doodle Wash, um, Doodle Wash is this fun uh, online um, it's doodlewash.com, D-O-O-D-L-E, wash.com, and they give you a watercolor prompt every day. Now, I can't always keep up with that. I can't do it every day, uh, but you can do a watercolor every day. They have a really supportive Instagram presence, and you can put your stuff on, and people will comment and like it and comment, and makes you feel good about yourself. <laughs> Plus, if you're struggling for an idea of what you want to paint, um, the prompts I find are really helpful. So yeah, today was windmills and I was like, ooh, I want to do a windmill. So sometimes I just jump on when it's something I want to paint instead of doing every day. We're kind of making it not completely uniform across just to give it more value and texture to give it a little bit of a change i 
I made it a little thick right there, so I just made it thicker. Um, it's not a coloring book. If you get out of the lines, no one's going to get mad at you. Um, if you get really frustrated with it, just get another piece of paper and try again. But I say stick with it because you'd be surprised at how much different they look when they dry. Um, so I don't like the center. I think it's just too light. It's bothering me. So I'm going to actually make it the really dark purple color. Is it a gun or is it a shield? And I think that helps quite a bit. So now we're going to do the rest of the sails. Um, we're going to stay away from the spines, the supports. I, I sometimes just make up words because I don't know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. I'm going to do the rest of the sail. If I don't like the color, then I'm just going to change it. <laughs> so I'm going to switch back to my bigger brush. And I'm using, it's like, a really pale, pale green. I don't know if you can see it on here. And it had some of the purple in it from the last time I used it. Oh, well, we'll get that out. And stick it over here. So I'm gonna see if I like this. I may not. It may be too light. May not be enough contrast. That is not enough contrast. You can also test this on, um, like, not your painting. Um, if you want to, or you can be like me and just see what happens. Um, so I'm actually going to use the paint gray, I think. I should probably get a piece of paper and see what I think, but we're just going to keep throwing color on here and see what happens. Now I'm going to really lighten the paint gray. I don't know if you can see that because my palettes, I moved my palette so you can see more of my painting and less of my uh, big white plate. So that's the paint gray. I put a, quite a decent amount of water in there. What's that? Um, and I guess I forgot we're going left to right. So I'm gonna flip this around and avoid the part where I put that green on first. Oh, sure. And this one, I want the edges to be dark and then the spine. And then I'm going to blend that. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can just fill it with water first. And if you're going to do that, you want to do it in sections. So I'm going to fill this with water first. Then I'm going to get the color that I want and just go across the top and then down the sides. And that's going to blend out and kind of bleed and give me some blooms. Just going to give me a kind of a fun effect, I think. I don't know. Now, the reason you need to do this in sections is because if you do it all at once, then it's all going to just blend and be blah. And so We'll go around and do them and then come back. And if these are dry, we'll do those. If not, we'll work on the scaffolding and then come back to it. So I think I like laying it down first and then coming back over when it's still a little wet and adding some more in. So that's the method that I'm gonna use. And if you've learned anything from these videos, it's that you are allowed to change your mind. And if something isn't working, right. just adjust. And for some reason, this one has more than this one. I don't know why. I'm not gonna worry about it. I think this random one has not enough. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And then I'm gonna come back in. Just do that right there. And then some along the top. 
Okay, yeah, I really like that so much better than the light green that I was planning on using. So um, this is what we're doing. So I'm just gonna put this straight down. And then pull down my spine. Let me be honest, I'm leaving the scaffolding for last because I don't exactly know what I'm doing there yet. It's going to be a I figure it out when we get there kind of situation. piece right here. Rinse and blend. <clears throat> Try not to sneeze. Then get it a little bit darker. Redo that top and this piece. And then down the sides. And it's just going to make it look different, um, which is really what we're going for is some variety. <clears throat> so I still have the color on, I'm just doing my spine. The edge of my sail, rinsing, blending. That one may not need it, but I'll do it anyway. Two more, um, and then we're gonna move on to the scaffolding because this one's not dry enough to move on to yet. So we're gonna go ahead and get these two done, these these pieces, and then move on. Oh, I'm going way darker here than I was when I started. Oh well, I'll go ahead and get this piece done too then while I'm here. What I'm really trying to avoid is um, harsh lines. I like the lines. I even like going into the green a little bit. Um, but I don't want it super harsh. I don't want it to look like I outlined it. So having it be wet when you put these extra touches on here will uh, help soften that out a little. And if you're still not liking it, just blend it some more. Okay, so here's where I put that green down. This Payne's Gray should be dark enough to just cover that back up again. <clears throat> Or this one will just look a little funny, and that's okay.
And feel free to leave a comment. Should I stop talking? Do you just want videos where you can just watch me paint? You want to have no clue what I'm doing? Um, rather not have my random nattering commentary. Is there something you want me to paint? Just let me know. Okay, so this is actually dry. I didn't think it was going to be, but it is. So we're just going to do the same thing in these two sections that we hadn't done before. Once again, we want the part closest to the center to be a little darker. And if your spines aren't perfectly spiny, go back in and adjust it or don't worry about it. Okay, so now I'm gonna blend that. Getting it nice and wet. And you see how much this bloomed earlier? That's good, that's cool. So now it's dry, so when I put the water right here, it's going to blend to this piece and not the other ones. So what I was worried about before is if we went in and tried to do them both at the same time, it was going to give us a weird effect. But I kind of think that's cool. So this one, it looks like I missed that last little piece, so we're just going to kind of add one in. I don't want it to go all the way to the end. I want it to have a little bit of a spine. Okay. And once again, hopefully I'm not making you guys dizzy if I turn in the paper so much. <laughs> I just realized that could make you Kind of like woozy. Okay, I'm, I'm really digging how this is turning out, so I hope you guys are liking it too. Um, I'm going to put like another dot right there in the center of that, of uh, the center piece. It's because I just thought of it, so I thought I should do it right then before I forgot. Okay, I'm not going to go back over that one with the water because I like the difference between the two, so I'm not going to mess with that. It, it, it really sometimes comes down to personal preference, like what do you like, what don't you like? Do you like the way your painting is turning out? Do you not? If you don't, is there something you would want to do to change it? What feels good to you? Like there, I just went deeper into the green because I didn't think there was enough of a um, swoop. I'm taking that into the green a little too. And I've been adding these little spiky spines that stick out just because I'm adding spiky spines that stick out. Um, that's the best part about this is you do what you want. Blend that. I'll probably come back in in a little bit and redefine some of those lines in between the spines, but I'm really kind of digging this look. So I'm just gonna keep keep rolling with how I'm doing it. I'm taking a pause break for some wine. And if you don't like wine, don't drink wine. Um, it's a different color than my paint water. That's mainly the reason. <laughs> that way I don't accidentally drink my paint water. 
I also always keep it on the left side and paint with my right hand so that I don't have to worry about hi, anything bizarre happening there. And then I just like to make it look really dark as we get down to the base. Oh, I'm getting text messages. Uh, please ignore me if I look at my wrist like that. taking that down a little bit because I just didn't like the way it spread out. Okay, so let's turn this around. Let's take a look. See what we think. I'll make it a little closer. See what you guys think. Um, I kind of dig it. So I'm going to let that go. So I'm going to work on the scaffolding and then I'm probably going to come back up and just add a little bit more purple to the spines to give them just a little bit more dimension. Um, and then maybe touch up some of these in the green part of my sails just to give them a little bit more. Um, and really go crazy as long as your colors are contrasting or if you don't want them contrasting, you wanna do the whole thing in one color, go for it. Um, sounds cool, just not what I was feeling today. Okay, so with the scaffolding, um, you've got these triangles that go to the back and this is the back one it is supposed to be in the back but it's looking like the way that I did it it, it could be the front one and these are the back so I think what I'm going to do is assume this is a center line coming straight down and kind of darken and fan and so our triangle is not like this um I don't know how to make it the other way around. Um, so the point base of our triangle is this part. <laughs> I realized that just looked really strange. Sorry. Um, and then I'm gonna use blue. I, cause I think we have enough green in this painting and we need some blue. Cause I may throw in some wispy wind things. Maybe. Uh, you can't see my face. I totally was just like, maybe. Um, so this front, I want this part to be the darkest. So just this line. And once again, it doesn't have to be straight. And it's going to go up behind that fin. So it's no big deal. So then I'm going to clean out this brush. And I'm going to start... I lost my point. Happens. Be careful sometimes. You lose your point. And then I'm going to start almost in diagonal strokes, taking it sideways. All the way up the side of this. And I may have to switch to the smaller brush as it gets smaller um, so that we don't have any may throw my brush through the window because I got too much water on it. And I'm just doing little like feather strokes to get this color air. Now it's gonna get really dark up through right. here because it's hidden behind the sail. So if we just make that whole section kind of a straight blue, it won't look weird, I hope. I don't know. Okay, so then we're gonna do the thing on the other side of this 
center line. Now, there's just this little teeny tiny piece that goes towards this. I'm just gonna do that real quick. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the diagonal outlines. All right. Just so it pulls back, it's, it's a little perspective trick. And I can't guarantee it's gonna work, it's just what I wanna do. I'm gonna clean the edge up a little. Okay, so that's how you have your foot in the front of your um, scaffolding. So... I don't know how you attract so many cats. Let's do the other two side legs and then I might readjust how those go. Oh, well, you don't just drag them where you're supposed to get up? So right up in here, you see the edge. And you just want it dark here. This one is in the back. It's further away from us, so we're going to make it darker. We're not going to worry as much about um, giving it the perspective aspect because it's just, it's further away. A what? sure that just goes all the way up in there. Feel free to just kind of run it off the page. <laughs> it needs to be darker. Um, okay, so then this other piece I didn't use. If you're um, neurotic about straight lines, which I used to be, but I'm not anymore, I don't care. Um, feel free to use a, a ruler for this part. So you can get those lines exactly how you want them and perfectly straight. We're kind of just doing the impression of scaffolding, so I'm not trying not to mess up my little spikes. Come up blue. And I want that darker. Do you have a pencil? We're just filling with a pencil. Okay. I do not. So it also has triangle supports that um, hold the scaffolding together. Um, I think these might be backwards, but I think it's still going to look okay. Um, just use your brush and put them in. I, we don't need them. They don't need to be perfect. It's really just the impression that there's something holding this up so it doesn't fall apart. Because we wouldn't want the windmill to fall down on top of everybody, right? Yeah, so you're just chilling. So try to make your diagonals Figure the same. So this one will meet on the sides, this front piece, and then this the back piece goes back behind your center post. So we might want to just darken that up right where it would touch the center post. Um, and just have it dark right there. So it looks like it's going behind it. And then with the smaller brush, kind of blend in this connection so that it blends up in and looks like the metal is fused. That actually looks kind of cool. Um, I'm holding it out so that I can look at it straight up because nobody looks at their picture straight down like this all the time. Um, so I'm just trying to get a, a feel for what I think. I, I I want to add some more dark on my poles, my supports. I think they're looking too flat. 
So I'm adding some dark, but not through the whole thing and not uniformly. And then I need some more water. This pan paint um, doesn't move quite the same as some of the other stuff that we that I use, so it's totally okay. Again, not super uh, even running some of it off. If you don't like that, don't do it. Okay. So then I'm actually going to take a little bit of the gray and I'm going to darken a couple spots. Just where I feel we should be much, much darker. That was not... But because watercolor is transparent and this blue is a pretty bold color, it's still going to show. So this is just giving me a shadow. I actually learned this trick in an acrylic painting class. Um, Payne's Gray is a perfect shadow you just put a wash of it over and it darkens everything up and it's really kind of nice okay so i kind of like the way that scaffolding looks um how we have it shadowed behind it's not perfect but it's also not the star of the show um we're gonna get just purple i'm gonna do purple one more time and i'm gonna really highlight the edge of this I'm almost outlining it. I'm probably not gonna do a lot of blending here. I want that to be really apparent and I want it to get darker as it goes in. And I want this dark coming out. I feel like I missed that, so I want that there. I'm doing the same on all of them. I switched to the smaller brush. If you have the control with the bigger one, go ahead. Oh, um, and if you can do this in one line, go for it. I am terrible at that. You should see me do whiskers. Oh, you, if you've seen the manatee, you have seen me do whiskers. I'm really bad at whiskers. Okay. I'm just darkening it up again. If you see how it's skipping right there, that means I don't have enough water. So I'm using too much paint, not enough water. And that makes it harder to paint with watercolors. And you may not need to do this step if you don't skip it. Uh, move on to something else, paint something else. Drink your wine and laugh at me for my mistakes. I don't care. And see that's already dry. And sometimes it'll dry lighter. But I really love the way the sails look. I was thinking about going back in and adding more, but I don't want to mess with that because I really like it. Um, now is the time where we get a second opinion because you've been looking at this for a while and you may not like it, but it may be way better than you think. So I'm going to turn around, show this to my husband, and make him stop playing video games for a second. I don't know if you can hear him. He liked it. Sometimes he does say he doesn't like it. Um, and then I just don't post those videos. <laughs> um, I will then sign my painting. I like to sign in the painting. So it's really hard to remove my signature. There you go. I know it's upside down. It's kind of fun that way. It's a windmill. It'll spin. Now, at one point I thought about doing um, like circular blue swashes of a really light blue. Um, 
I'm gonna actually see what it looks like on my outline paper, which is not watercolor paper, so it may not look right. So I was thinking about going like that and like that. Um, but I'm not digging it, so I'm not going to. But if you want to, that is what originally was planned was um, these little like blue circles to make it look like it was spinning, but I don't want to do that. Um, not confident in my abilities to not butcher it at this point. Um, so there you go. That is your windmill. Oh my God. The alliteration today is insane. Your windmill during wine and watercolors with Wendy. Um, sorry, I promise not to be quite so obnoxious next time. Uh, rinse your brushes really well. Take them out of the water. Don't leave them in the water overnight. That's the main way you ruin your brushes. See, that's how you ruin your brushes if you leave them in water overnight. So don't do that. Um, or you have to buy more. And right now we're all in quarantine, so we can't. Um, so thanks for watching. And you can feel free to check me out on Instagram at Drunken Aunt Wendy, Facebook at Art by Wendy Smalley. Um, if you have any suggestions or ideas or something you want me to paint, just let me know. Thank you so much. Bye.